So you bought yourself a new Millsurp rifle. You've given it a cleaning, a really good cleaning. It sure looks clean, but is it? Here's how you find out for sure. The thing about Millsurp rifles is that they've seen a lot of use. They've seen soldiers, they've seen collectors, and they've seen shooters. But not that many people know how to actually clean a, a rifle properly, so um, they tend to have a lot of material build up in their bores year after year after year. And sometimes it takes a lot to get them cleaned out. Now you can use uh, ammonia based products to get rid of that copper fouling and all the built up powder residue and lead residue that's built up over the years. But there's a quicker way of doing it and it's called an electronic bore cleaner. Now you can buy these on the market but they're actually quite expensive for what they are. You can actually build one for yourself for a lot cheaper. Here's a few parts that you're going to need. You're going to need a metal rod, a thin one, something that will fit into uh, the bore of, uh, of your Millsurp rifle. You're going to need a few bits of tubing, something that will easily slip over top of the, the rod that you've got. Um, you can actually cut them down if you want various sizes. You can cut them down the side like I have for, for ease of installation. Or you can use O-rings or what have you. You're going to need a power source of some type. Now it doesn't have to be anything too fancy. A couple of uh, AA batteries ought to do. You don't want to go too high in the voltage. Um, you could use all kinds of stuff. You could even use a cell phone charger as long as it's not too high powered. I wouldn't go over 9 volts. I went and got myself something like this from Radio Shack just because it's convenient. It holds two AA batteries and that's fine. I also have a, a set of alligator clips which are quite quite handy for this sort of thing. You're also going to need some kind of electrolyte. Now I've got a mix here of I think it's one part vinegar, one part water, and one po part uh, normal household cleaning ammonia. Seems to be working pretty well for me. Just a note, uh, vinegar, um, it's not so great on bluing. So, you know, if that worries you, uh, you could just go straight household cleaning ammonia. That should be fine. Really, most electrolyte, I mean, this should work with salt water if you really wanted to. But, I don't know, salt and uh, metal, eh, you know, rust. Eh, it doesn't sound like a good plan to me. So there's a couple of options for you. Now with these items, you can make yourself an electronic bore cleaner, and I'll show you how. Okay, so here's the rifle in the cleaning position. I've pretty much taken all the wood off and uh, all the extra bits and pieces as much as I can without going too far. And that's mostly because the electrolyte, well, it tends to get all over the place. So you want to keep it off the wood as much as possible. Be good to have a few rags hanging around too. Because, you know, spills happen. I've taken an earplug and I've actually plugged the muzzle. Now, most people who do this, they plug the chamber end, and that's probably the smarter way to go. But I haven't really found a plug that will work for most chambers that I use. Plus, the chambers, you know, they're pretty mucky too. They're full of all kinds of gunk and stuff that's been left over in the years. So, uh, it's good to hit that as well. Another negative is that the junk of material that's going to be floating up through the electrolyte is actually going to end up in the chamber. So you'll have to take some, you know, special effort in the chamber to get that all cleaned up. Okay, so when you set up your rod, you're going to have to put your tubing um, in strategic places to stop the rod from contacting the metal anywhere. You want to keep the rod completely separate from the action and the barrel or any other piece of the rifle. Now I've got a piece here, right at the end, which obviously keeps this end from touching the, the, the barrel down at the bottom. I've got a piece in the middle just in case this bows a little bit and wants to touch. And then I've got a longer piece here that helps protect the rod from the action um, up at the top because there's lots of opportunities there for it to, to get in there and touch the metal. Okay, next part is going to be loading up the bore with electrolyte. 
I got my little bottle here. I've got a rubber funnel that I'm using to direct the flow. And the idea is to get electrolyte in there until it completely fills the bore. Now there's going to be spillage. So it's good to have a rag handy. There we go. Okay. Next step is actually getting the rod in there. Okay, so the rod needs to go in next. Slide it right down. Lots of spillage. But that's okay. And there we go. Rod's in place. Now to pick up or hook up your power unit, got a couple of uh, clips here, which are quite handy. And you'll want to put the positive end onto the metal somewhere. It doesn't really matter, somewhere good and solid. Be nice to get it on a place that it doesn't have any uh, any protection on it, like uh, parkerizing or that sort of thing, but uh, try to do your best. And the negative end goes onto your rod. Now this is important, which way you've got it. The electrons will want to flow from the positive end through the metal of the action, across the electrolyte, and into the rod on the negative side. So the positive goes to the rifle, the negative goes to the rod. You don't want to mix this up. <laughs> or else effectively what you'll be doing is picking up material off your rod and depositing on the inside of your bore, and you don't want that. You don't want, to, want it to go the other way around. So that's all you hook it up. And then you turn it on. Now this is going to take a little while to get going, but I'll show you the results here in just a minute. All right, so we're starting to get some work going on here. You can see the bubbles rising up. That means that the system is actually working. What is happening is that the electrons are flowing through the positive end, going down through the metal of the action and, and the bore, and the barrel, and they really want to get across to the other side where the rod is. And in effect, what they're doing is they're actually jumping on board miscellaneous bits of junk that are on the surface of the bore. And they're riding across like almost like a, uh, like a raft. And then once they get to the rod, they jump across to the rod, leaving the flotsam, the raft, behind. So it's lifting all these little particles and bits and pieces off the bore and depositing it on the rod. Now you should probably let this run for about an hour and then check it every 20 minutes or so. And you'll probably scrape off all kinds of weird junk, all foamy, gross junk on the surface. And uh, every once in a while you'll probably have to refill the bore with um, more electrolyte. Now you could use, um, you know, any kind of uh, eyedropper or, a, you know, a bulb for flushing ears or a syringe or what have you. Just make sure that if you use that kind of stuff that you keep it aside and out of your medical um, drawers and out of your medicine cabinet. Because uh, you don't want that electrolyte going into somebody's eye or into their ear or into their mouth because it, uh, it is quite poisonous. <laughs> so, safety tip there. So we're going to check this in about 20 minutes and see how it's going. Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. Look at this. Now, all this material was actually deposited on the inside of the bore and the chamber. And uh, look at that. Yeah. Now, I'm thinking a lot of this. The black gook is probably um, just uh, burnt powder. But the orangey stuff, I'm not really 100% sure what that is. It could be a combination of, of copper fouling and uh, maybe even some rust. It's hard to say. But it, it sure, <laughs> I mean, you sure don't want this stuff in your bore, that's for sure. This is years and years and years of layered copper and uh, other junk and rust and all kinds of garbage. And I've been sitting in the bore, well, for who knows how long. So we're going to add a little bit of extra 
solution to this, some, uh, some more electrolyte, fill it up a little bit more, and uh, we'll just keep on going and see how this turns out. Okay, so I've had this running for about an hour. Got a good amount of foam out of the top, wiped all that out of there, and uh, filled it up a few times. So now we're going to see what the results are, the fluid that comes out of the bore. Gross. Yeah. Look at that little orange goop. Pretty nasty. That's pretty uh, surprising, the amount of gook and gross stuff that's uh, in that bore. So I'm going to have to wipe this down and give it a good cleaning. And then uh, do it again. You can repeat this process for several times until it starts to come out nice and clear. And then you know that your barrel is, uh, is actually clean. And that's how you know for sure whether or not you've got a clean bore. So that's pretty much it, folks. I'm going to fill her up and do this one more time, maybe twice more times, and uh, get this sucker really clean. But uh, that's how you make yourself an electronic bore cleaner. So have a good one, and I'll see you out on the range.